For this video, we're going to solve the quadratic inequality x squared minus 6x is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, in the previous video, we looked at how to solve a quadratic inequality graphically. Um, but in this example, we're going to see how would we approach solving this algebraically. So if you think about the function f of x equals x squared minus 6x, we know that it is a quadratic function with a positive a value. So our graph is going to look something like this. It's going to be an upward opening parabola. Uh, so to figure out where this graph is greater than zero, we're trying to figure out where is our graph above the x-axis. So if our graph is ever below the x-axis, it's going to happen when um, our graph crosses uh, the x-axis. The and so what we need to do is figure out where are our x-intercepts. And once we find the x-intercepts, we know that our graph is zero at those values. And then we can test points in between our x-intercepts and outside of them uh, to determine whether the values of uh, our function are going to be positive or negative on those intervals. right? Because we know that at the x-intercepts, that's where our graph is touching the x-axis. And on either side is where our graph is changing from positive to negative uh, and it's going to be a changing from above or below the x-axis. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So we want to find the x-intercepts. So to find the x-intercepts, we know that we take our uh, function and we set it equal to 0. So x squared minus 6x equals 0. So luckily, this one is factorable. So that makes it nice. So it's x times x minus 6 equals 0. Using the zero product property, we take each piece and set them equal to 0. And that uh, solve these, and that will give us the x values of our x-intercept. So we have x-intercepts at x equals 0 and x equals 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 0 and 6 on a number line. And then we're going to test values uh, in between those and outside of those to figure out whether our function is going to be positive or negative on those intervals. So let's draw a quick number line here. So here's our number line. Um, and then we have x-intercepts here at uh, here at 0, here at 0, and then we have one here at 6. So what we want to do is we want to pick values in between 0 and 6 to the left of 0 to the right of 6 and test them in our function to determine whether they're positive or negative. Because any value in between these is going to have the same um, sign as all of the other values. So every value in between 0 and 6 will have the same sign. Every value to the right of 6 and every value to the left of 0 will each have the same sign as all the other on that interval. So let's pick some, let's test values in between 0 and 6. So let's say if x is equal to 1, what is the value of our function? Um, you could have picked any number, I just picked 1 for simplicity purposes. So substitute 1 into our function. So we get 1 squared minus 6 times 1. That's 1 minus 6, which is negative 5, and is a negative value. So that tells me that all of the values in between 0 and 6 are going to be negative. Uh, let's try a number to the right of 6, maybe 7. So if x equals 7, what is true about our function? So plug in 7, so we have 7 squared minus 6 times 7. That is 49 minus 42, which is going to be 7, which is a positive number. So values to the right of 6 are going to be positive on that interval. And then pick a number to the left of 0. Uh, let's try negative 2. If x equals negative 2, what happens? So we have negative 2 squared minus 6 times negative 2. We get negative 2 squared is 4. Uh, negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12. 4 plus 12, that's 16. So this is a positive number. So to the left, values to the left of 0 are going to be positive. 
So now we have to think about what this means in terms of the context of the problem. Um, so we want to know where is our graph greater than zero, right? Just strictly greater than zero. We know that when x equals zero and when x equals six, our graph is equal to zero, meaning that these are the x-intercepts. So at zero and at six, uh, it is equal to zero. So we are not going to be part of the solution set there. So it's going to be open circles at um, zero and at six. Now we want to know where our graph is positive. So if we look here, we see that on the interval to the left of zero and to the right of six, we have positive numbers. So, and that's actually true for all values here to the left of zero and all values here to the right of six. So this actually represents our solution set for this inequality. Um, and so this is saying that x is less than zero or x is greater than six. So the solution set is the set of all x such that x is less than zero or x is greater than six. Um, if we were looking at this in interval notation, this would be from negative infinity up to zero or from six all the way off to infinity. So interval notation would be negative infinity to zero or from six to infinity. So that would be our solution set. Now, how does this compare to if we were to look at this graphically? So let's just take a quick look at the graph. So here's the graph of this function. Um, so we can see that our graph is equal to zero here at zero and at six. So we did that right. We found the x-intercepts. And then we can see that for all values to the right of six and to the left of zero, our graph is above the x-axis, which is what we said here. If we pick any value to the left of zero or to the right of six, our graph is above it, the x-axis.